Good morning kids, today we're checking out a brand new video from Popcraft Studios of turning Pokemon into Godzilla monsters. Let's hop in and check them out. A few months back I turned Feraligator from Pokemon into a Kaiju during a live stream, and it turned- You know what, I should have said, let's log them in, because you log Pokemon into the Pokedex. Damn it, I should have said that. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool, cool, but I've also proven, proven that I can do much better with Pokemon since. <laughs> and after my recent third <laughs> round of Godzilla <laughs> monsters, Hold on one moment. Monsters as dragons, there we go. Two of my That's subscribers better. suggested that I try taking Pokemon and turning them into Monsterverse Titans. And I thought that would be that a could be perfect cool. way to wrap up my Pokemon Grand Prix, where I've done three Pokemon videos three Mondays in a row. But even if this, this is, is the end of the Pokemon, Pokemon Grand, Grand Prix, Prix, it's not, not the end of me using, using Pokemon, Pokemon, and I would be open to <laughs> doing a sequel to today's video. So leave me some suggestions in the comments for Pokemon you'd want to see as giant monsters. Oh, now, now let's that's get into gonna this. be good. Let's, let's go. Hit like if you feel Subscribe. If you feel like it, but by the way, enjoy, enjoy the, the show. show. As someone who spent the last few years... Ah, of course, we're starting out with the one, the only, the god of death and destruction, Yavelto. Yavel... yeah. Oh, damn it, I'm forgetting how to pronounce the name. Uh, Yavelto. That... <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, I'm dropping the ball hard. <laughs> My life okay, fighting kaiju, kaiju, I thought I had a grip on how tough these monsters could be. But the Titans of Dimension K005 made me question what I knew about these beasts. You see, this world has its own monster ecosystem, where Alpha Titans Ooh. run the show and keep the other ones in check. Seems like the main big boss of this place is a monster called Godzilla, a king of all monsters who's actually got variants all over the multiverse. Yeah, but I guess he is this one could be well the original. Saw. Most of the monsters here don't even bother trying to pick a fight with Godzilla anymore. Until recently, that is, when a bunch of new titans started popping up, and one of them finally managed to not kill the king, but at least take him out for a while. The locals yeah, of this world down. have started calling this thing Evil She, the Winged Death. It's 400 Evil feet she. long from its demonic hmm. horned head to the end of its massive clawed tail, and it's got a wingspan of about the same length, with two giant hands at the ends of its wings. This thing was first spotted in Mexico. A titan called Rodan was flying overhead when this monster <laughs> tackled it right out of the sky into the city below. Oh, a few boy. dozen buildings in the first hit alone. The two titans duked it out, <laughs> killing thousands good. of people in the process, with Evil She seeming like it was loving every second of that fight. Finally, to wrap things up, Evil She spread its wings and tail and started glowing red with sparking lightning coming off it. Then, it absorbed the life force right out of Rodan. When it was done, Evil She's prey had been turned into stone right in the middle of the Ooh. city. Evil She flew off right after that, and nobody had any idea what to do about the giant stone birdie. So it literally just steals the energy out of the life form, but then it just turns it to stone. It doesn't kill them. Hmm. It's like a Medusa logic. Left behind. But Godzilla clearly sensed that something was up. And maybe that's exactly what the Winged Death was hoping for. Godzilla came up onto land for the first time in over a year and was tracking this new titan, which unfortunately led Godzilla right into New York City. It was oh, like this thing was New York. waiting for Godzilla to be in the most populated area possible before it came down from the sky and started attacking the King of the Monsters. Godzilla pulled out every it attack in its arsenal, but it all. seemed like absorbing Rodan had powered this thing up even more. It shot a cannon of red energy from its chest that nearly took Godzilla's arm off. Their battle Damn, leveled half of powerful. Manhattan. Then, Evil She went in for the kill. It wrapped its wings and tail around Godzilla, and like with Rodan, it absorbed the life force right out of the king. Godzilla wasn't left completely out of commission as Rodan was, though. Seemed like the wing of death could only absorb so much from Godzilla before it fell off the beast, curled itself up, and became a black cocoon. Folks are trying yeah, to find a way to, to destroy sleep. it while it's dormant, but they got nothing so far. The big egg seems like it's pretty indestructible. <laughs> Godzilla was left with its body almost fully turned to stone, but it still managed to hobble away back into the water. Apparently it swam out to the Arctic and has made itself some kind of ice cocoon as well. Like oh. it's charging back up or something. Apparently its body is starting to glow. I see what he's talking about. He's making a reference to Godzilla x Kong New Empire. Pink, so maybe that's a sign of recovery, but nobody knows when he's going to wake up. <laughs> or who might wake up first, him or the Winged Death. Now, Eveltal is a Pokemon lots of people have requested okay, that I, I use. Right. I was very excited to use him for this episode specifically, and when I went into this drawing, 
I I started doing it, planning <laughs> for this to be the headliner of the episode. I was like, this is going to be one of the best drawings I've ever done. I'm going to crush it with this one. It's really well, good. Well, I do absolutely love how this one turned out. I think it's my least favorite drawing of the episode. Really? Like, I really like how all the art hmm. turned out this episode. This feels to me even like a bit of a step up from my Pokemon Monster Hunter episodes, which those felt like they yeah, were some those of the best I've ever good. done on this channel as well. But I don't know, maybe it's that these have a, a bit of a different vibe to them. Like now that I've gotten a little bit better at destroyed buildings, which there's not as much in this drawing, but there's more in the other ones. <laughs> those as framing for my... I mean, it kind of makes sense that that would be less because you're looking up at it and you're not looking at it like it's head on. Monsters, that's just it's something like, a bit mm -hmm. new and different yeah, from my usual fantasy Feels monster well settings. Puts these on another level or also just the designs, the poses. I don't know everything about this episode. I just love how it turned out. <laughs> I do make a few tweaks to this one after the Still fact, changing good. the background and the brightness of the lightning so that it's not drawing too much attention away from the character's head. But man, I love this one and think I have some even better stuff coming for you later. So let's take a look at the finished result. Let's go to the next. Oh, wait, no, first, the final product. Love it. And now we head on to the next. Not long after Godzilla Nino started King. taking his power hmm. nap, even more Titans started popping up and causing problems. And I actually got a theory about where they're coming from, but I'll get to that later. The next big beastie to rear its head was one that actually looked a lot like Godzilla, but purple and with big... <laughs> the Nido King Kaiju. Now that's gonna be good. ...ears and a horn sticking out of its head. Some folks have been calling it Nidozilla, and this thing seemed like it was eyeing to take the place as a new elf of this world, with both Godzilla <laughs> out of the way and Evil She in its cocoon. Throwing this open, here we go! It's stomped its way right into New York, too, <laughs> to try and destroy the cocoon, but it wasn't the only titan coming after the dormant beast. Another uh -oh. elf of this world, Kong, who more actively works with humans, crawled its way out of the center of the earth where it lives to come and try and smash up Evil She too. Meaning, What's it came going on? face to face with <laughs> Nidozilla and was not happy to see the big purple dino. Kong had held his own against Godzilla before. But okay, if Kong could talk, he'd probably be like, bring it on, you bonny looking ripoff. This thing had some <laughs> tricks Godzilla didn't. While Godzilla is pretty home in the water, this thing is more of a master of the earth. It dug its way underground and was able to burst up underneath Kong. It stabbed its horn right through the big ape's foot, then knocked it away with its huge tail, just to charge at him again Damn. with its horn pointed ready to impale Kong. It's using Kong horn managed drill. to dodge the attack and climb itself onto Nidozilla, trying to snap his horn off. But that thing seemed like it was harder than Diamond, because it was not breaking. Given another rip So the first move it used was Dig, then it... And it well, yeah, it used Dig, then Iron Tail, then Horn Drill. Hmm. Found with some time to prepare, Kong could probably move. find a way to best Set. this thing. Good move, Seth. But without knowing what he was up against, and thinking he could fight this thing with the same tactics he once used on Godzilla, Kong was outclassed and ended up having to retreat. Nidozilla did try to smash up Evil She's cocoon for a bit after that, but step, step, eventually step. realized he wasn't getting anywhere either, so it just stomped off, heading towards Philadelphia. These new titans seem like they're Wait, always trying to find the most populated areas to do their fighting in, which is where my theory about them comes from. See, there's a demon running around the multiverse who makes kaiju, and my guess is it gets its kicks oh by watching its kaiju fight monsters from other worlds and seeing all the destruction they cause in the process. This demon is from a team of demons called the Archons, who are looking to wipe out pretty much everything in the multiverse and sadistically enjoy themselves while doing it. Not to sell. So it seems Watch like that. this would be right on track with their plans. I can't say for sure that that's what's going on, because I don't know if this demon would let two of its own kaiju fight each other, like how Nidozilla was going after Evil She's Cocoon, but there are eh, plenty more know. examples of titans appearing in this world lately that seem to be going straight for the big cities to have their brawls. Now, when I started drawing Nido King, I All was right, drawing a go. lot of inspiration from Godzilla, various versions of Godzilla, because, you know, mm -hmm. Nido King has sort of that shape to him already. And I actually started thinking that he looked a lot like Destroya, one of my absolute oh, favorite Godzilla yeah, monsters. Kind of. Because he's got, like, the big ears and he's got the big horn on his head. But then after I was done the drawing and went in to just do a little bit more research for the writing hmm. process, I saw that Nido King might actually be based off a different Godzilla monster, Bear 
Aragon. Oh yeah, Beragon. Does look super similar to Nido King and <laughs> digs underground and stuff like that. Nido it King is almost a one-to-one. -one. So there's more similarities there. But I wasn't actually pulling any inspiration from Baragon when I was doing the drawing. And this drawing, I think, well, I... I think I might like the next drawing in this episode a little bit better. I think this is like the cleanest, purest example I could do of Pokemon I as Godzilla monsters. I mean, it like if you know Nido King and Godzilla even just slightly, yeah. you look at this and you can pretty instantly tell what this drawing is. And I love how the texturing on him turned out. He looks rocky and sturdy. The pose, I really love. It looks very Godzilla-like mm -hmm. and epic, and the tail helps frame the whole piece. The buildings in the background are detailed very enough good. to be interesting, but not so detailed that they're distracting from the actual main character. And we've got a good element of looking up at Nido King. I mean, I, I could have emphasized that yeah. more looking up at him even more, but the more you're looking up at something, the smaller and smaller its head is going to look compared to the rest <laughs> its body lower down. So I think this was a pretty good... <laughs> kind of thinking like Genie for that for a second. Like, phenomenal cosmic power. And a bit of a little living space. <laughs> balance of looking up but not exaggerating it too too much so i am just super thrilled with how this one turned out but like i said i, I might even like the next drawing better so let's take a look at how this one finished <laughs> up all right and needle king is pretty good and pretty clean like you said because after all it is kind of based on a godzilla monster on to number three Quick Absolute interruption to say ad. that if you want any of the art from this episode as posters, they will be made available as posters on the Popcraft Studios Teespring store and linked in the mm -hmm. description. But also, if you want a bunch of my best Pokemon art, there's lots of different Pokemon drawings in my art book, Monsters of the Multiverse. I've got Pokemon SCPs in there, Pokemon Dragons, Pokemon mixed with Monster Hunter, and lots of other cool stuff nice. as well. That will also be linked in the description. Hmm. <clears throat> and we're back. And well, with Lycanroc Midnight form specifically. Ooh. Now, yes. even if my theory is right, this next what type might not have been made by the Archon, because there are stories of this one existing for a good long while in this world. It's not as famous as some of the other Titans in this world, because it hasn't like caused Godzilla many problems for people until recently. They call this guy Lycanite, and in its regular form, it's a bit on the smaller side, Titan-wise, compared to Godzilla and Kong, standing at under 200 feet tall. And the few stories <laughs> about it from the past small. are that it was a guard for the people it lived near, protecting folks from other Titans that came around. But recently, it took on a new form and a new attitude, seeming to care a lot less about who it hurt in this state. Oh, he's making it to where it can switch between the forms. Okay. That Neozilla Titan came stomping into a city near where this thing was resting, and it was like it could sense a powerful predator coming into its territory. And that made this thing's blood boil. <laughs> With a full moon in the sky and a monster coming into its terrain, Lycanite transformed into a 300-foot-tall red-furred brute. It came after Nidozilla with no regard for the destruction it caused in its oh, wake. Oh, hell yes. Clambering over buildings, knocking him down in the process, and doing whatever it had to to get at its challenger and try and tear him apart. This thing was fast and vicious and completely reckless. It kept headbutting Nidozilla despite the thing having more than a rock-hard body, but surprisingly, Lycanite's head proved to be about as hard, because he actually managed to crack Nidozilla's hide after a few hits. Plus, weirdly Damn. enough, it seemed like this thing's giant mane of hair that made it look like it should be in an 80s glam rock band or something <laughs> was pretty hard and heavy itself because it whipped the longest tuft of hair on its head like a mace and managed to batter Nidozilla around pretty good with it. Of course, oh, Nidozilla was awesome doing some see. serious damage to this guy, too. He impaled Lycanite a few times, even bit off a chunk of his thigh at one point, but Ow. the big wolf just kept coming like he couldn't feel any of the pain. Of course, people of the city didn't really care Jeez. about who won. They just wanted the fight to end. Because like all the other kaiju battles happening lately, they were decimating the whole town. End it all. Even if like I was trying to protect folks in this <laughs> manic and vicious form, the harm it was doing was probably outweighing the good because it was taking out about as many buildings as Nidozilla was. Yeah, that's Eventually, Nido likely. dug itself into the earth and just vanished. So I guess it was retreating. But now the whole city is being evacuated. Because who knows when it could pop up next, or if Lycanite will be just as reckless if another Titan comes around to challenge it. Hmm. 
Now Lycanroc in Midnight form has been suggested a bunch for my Pokemon SCP series, and I do think it would have been a great fit for that, and I had actually originally planned to end my Pokemon Grand Prix with a new Pokemon SCPs episode, but then oh, when I got the suggestions to do Pokemon as Godzilla monsters, and I've seen Godzilla minus one recently, and so much Godzilla stuff has been happening, I was like, I that think I like this lot. better, but I still wanted to use Lycanroc, and I think <laughs> it was an awesome choice for this episode. I was actually originally going nice. to use uh, Mega Metagross for my last Titan in this, but really? then I realized that texture-wise, it was going to be pretty similar to what I did with Nidoking, and I've been really liking my fur rendering technique lately, so I was like, all right, let's go with Lycanroc as a kaiju. Not necessarily as fitting as making it an SCP, but I think it was a great choice, and I think this is my favorite drawing of the episode, and hmm. maybe my favorite drawing of the year? I don't know, maybe I still like the new- Now, I will say, yes, this is a very nice one, but of the video, I'll have to give that point to Yavelto. I, what can I say? I love it. Video King won better, or maybe even I like, like Gyarados, Lagaya Cruz Fusion. But man, my, my top 23 of 2023 is going to be stacked with Pokemon drawings this year. <laughs> anyway, I, I really love how the pose turned out on this one. It feels very monstrous werewolf-like, and just the, the little extra element of the full moon in the background kind of lighting the streak of cloud in behind the character and giving an excuse for the rim lighting on the back of this character, paired with the fact that he's up, we're looking up at him, he's hmm. on a cliff over the city. Just all those elements combined to just, mwah, oh, make me absolutely love this one. No, yeah, and I got to agree with that. happy with how that the design is. turned out, too. That face is one of my coolest wolf creature kind of faces, I think. And I hope you're all as jazzed about it as I am. Let's take a look at the finished result. And there we go. Now, I do have to say, yeah, this is pretty damn cool. But I still got to give the vote to Yavelto. You can have second place. What a way to wrap up the Pokemon Grand Prix. And by the way, if you're new here and you want more Pokemon stuff, you might want to check out the first two episodes of the Pokemon Grand Prix, where I turned Pokemon into aliens, and then Pokemon into fantasy armors. Or I if saw you just that want one. more Godzilla stuff, you might like my Godzilla Monsters as Dragons episode that I did recently. Also a reminder that the Popgrass Studios Patreon is now free for everybody, so if you want hey. the high resolution art from this episode or the inks to color yourself, those will be going up there tomorrow. But besides that, that's all for today, hmm. except of course for ending this video on some kind of Positive up the thing. Nope. note, and the thought I want to leave people with is the idea that if you plan on doing a New Year's resolution, like you want to do one year of a change or challenge to try and make a new habit for yourself, you <laughs> might want to start now. The majority of people yeah, don't yeah. stick with their New Year's resolutions, so as other It's always best to start something before the starter point, starting people point. People start telling you ah, that they've fallen off theirs. It's just subconscious encouragement for you to give up on yours. When I personally do one year challenges, I don't bother waiting for a specific date. I just start when I feel I should. I went yeah, from May exactly. 2022 until June of 2023 without having any desserts, and I just recently started a new one on November 29th, going a full year without having any snacks between my meals. So if you've got really? something that you want to huh. change, I highly encourage you, just that's start bad. now. Might make it feel more real or special for you. I hope that's <laughs> inspiring. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday. Goodbye. Well, folks, that's going to be the end of today's episode, and I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below, and I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.